Alright, so what exactly is stoichiometry? As I've mentioned before in class, it is the math of chemistry, math of chemical reactions. And you can see here that it is the branch of chemistry dealing with quantities of substances in chemical reactions. And I, as I've talked about, a balanced equation is pretty much like a recipe. It tells you the ingredients that are needed, how much of that ingredient is needed, and the proportions in case we need to adjust that recipe. So, hey, there's the bell. If you have a recipe that tells you how to make two dozen cookies and you need to make ten dozen, then mathematically you would multiply everything by five. If you have a recipe that tells you it will serve 36, but you don't want that much, you can cut it in half. And the same thing with these reactions, although usually a little more complex than just multiply by five or divide by two. So let's start by looking at one of our recipes, a balanced equation for the formation of water. So here we see hydrogen and oxygen makes water. Hydrogen and oxygen both Hofbrinkle, so they're H2 and O2. I can interpret this on a couple different levels. First up, I'll look at the particle level. And we've talked about the particle level several times this year to help us get an understanding of what's going on. So here I see visually and in words that I have two molecules of hydrogen that are going to react with one molecule of oxygen and producing two molecules of water, our familiar Mickey Mouse looking molecules that we've seen throughout the year. So you can draw this picture and you can write it out with words. And if you want to make it easier, I know as an American teenager we're looking for less work. So two molecules of hydrogen, you can write H2, react with one molecule of oxygen, O2, to produce two molecules of water, H2O. You can use that instead of the words. Well, the particle level is great. It helps us understand what's going on. However, it's not very practical. I can't tell you to go into the lab and make me two molecules of water. So, of course, we have our lovely friend, the mole. And again, why do chemists use mole? Because the particles that make up the matter and everything we deal with are so incredibly small, I need a ginormous number of them to get to a visible amount of material to work with. So as a chemist, I like to look at this reaction on the mole level. And so now it says two moles of hydrogen react with one mole of oxygen to produce two moles of water. And so, of course, I can then remember that the mole is multifaceted. And if we've got gaseous or liquid products or reactants, we can talk about volume with liters, liters of gas, perhaps. Um, we can talk at the particle level with Avogadro's number. And most importantly, we can look at the mass, because that's the most practical application for us right now, as we can measure something in the lab on the scales. So let's look on the mass level. Now unlike particle where we had the 2 to 1 to 2 situation going on, 2 hydrogens, 1 oxygen, 2 waters, we can't say that on the mass level, on the gram level. It is not 2 grams of hydrogen plus 1 gram of oxygen making 2 grams of water. It is interpreted using the molar mass. So on the periodic table, hydrogen is 1.0, H2, so it's 2.0 grams. And that 2 in front, the coefficient, tells me that there are 4 grams of hydrogen in this reaction. Oxygen is 16.0, O2, 32.0. There's 32.0 grams of oxygen in this reaction. And then water. 2 H's, 1 plus 1, plus an O, 16. Water is 18.0. Two of them makes 36 grams of water in the reaction. And so by looking at the molar mass and on the gram level, we can now see right before our very eyes that we have proved the law of conservation of mass. Whatever goes into a reaction comes out. And so we have you know, 4 plus 32, and that makes 36 grams of water. 
mass of reactants equals the mass of products. And we'll look at that again here in a moment. All right. So up next, we're going to look at the most important piece of information that we can take from a balanced equation, the mole ratio. And as I see, said there in your notes packet, it's the heart and soul of every stoichiometry problem. We're always going to use the mole ratio because it's our link between one substance and another substance in a reaction. So here's another recipe. One mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen to make two moles of ammonia. So what is the mole ratio of nitrogen to hydrogen in this reaction? Well, nitrogen is N2, hydrogen is H2. And so what is that ratio? Well, we just have to look at the coefficients. So it's like there's a 1 in front of the nitrogen. So it's a 1 to 3 ratio. You can write it like in math class, or you can set it up like a conversion factor that we're going to be using. 1 mole of nitrogen to 3 moles of hydrogen. Hydrogen to ammonia. Hydrogen is still H2. Ammonia, of course, NH3. So what is that ratio? And it is 3 to 2. So you have to make sure that you write it in the appropriate order. When someone asks you the ratio of hydrogen to ammonia, it's 3 moles of hydrogen to 2 moles of ammonia. So it's either 3 colon 2 or 3 over 2. So how can we use this? Well, let's take a look at a, our simplest stoichiometry problem, a mole-mole problem. If you are given a certain amount of moles, the mole ratio can take you to the desired moles that you're trying to find out about. So like in this sample problem, how many moles of hydrogen are needed to prepare 312 moles of ammonia? So we have our recipe. In the problem, we have our one piece of known information. We have 312 moles of ammonia that are given to us. We like to set that over one to make it look like a conversion factor. And of course, whatever dimension is in the top must come down here. So I have to put moles of ammonia down here because I am converting that piece of information. What am I converting it into? Well, I want to know how many moles of hydrogen. So I will put moles of hydrogen up above. And so you can see I was given a certain amount of moles. This right here is my mole ratio. And I just have to make sure that I'm going to use the right numbers. There are three moles of hydrogen in the reaction. There are two moles of ammonia. And so now I can do the math as it's, I should. On the cross the top, 312 times 3 is 936. On the bottom, 1 times 2 is 2. And so that is telling me that I have 468 moles of hydrogen needed. So again, the ratio is 3 to 2. It's 1 and a half. So if you're a if you've got some super dope math skills, then you know, okay, if I have 312 moles of ammonia and I need to go to hydrogen, it's a 3 to 2 ratio. That's one and a half times as much. So I just have to multiply by that ratio. Use the dimensional analysis if needed, if you like that problem solving technique, but you can rationalize it just using the mole ratio, especially for this simple mole mole problem. All right, our last thing here today is checking up on molar mass. We're going to be using molar mass a lot with stoichiometry, so just to double check that we know how we're doing this, remember in the classroom we've got a rule that we go to the tenth with the molar mass, and of course it's labeled grams per mole. So the molar mass of sodium hydroxide is 40.0 grams per mole. Where did that magical number come from? Well, on the periodic table, sodium rounds to 23.0. Make sure you round each element before you add them up. Don't use the yucca numbers. Add them all up and then round. Oxygen is 16.0 and hydrogen is 1.0. So 23 plus 16 plus 1 that's my 40.0. 
take a moment and try and do the other five. Remember, letter E, aluminum nitrate, when we have parentheses involved. To do that molar mass, I have one aluminum, I have three nitrogens, and I have nine oxygens. So pause the video and try the other five, and then I'll give you the answers here. So here are the answers to the other molar masses. Hydrogen 1.0, chlorine 35.5, that's how we got the 36.5. Down here, letter D, remember I love to use bromine to check your rounding. It's 79.9, not 80.0. On the periodic table, it says 79.904. So the zero says we just drop it. Letter E, you can see the result of one aluminum, three nitrogen, and nine oxygen. And of course, we write point zero if it's right on the button. All right, so the last thing is practicing interpreting those balanced reactions. There is that worksheet up on the site there, so hopefully you've looked at it. I'll just give you a little help. Um, here's my recipe for making aluminum chloride and I'm asking you to use a solid circle to represent aluminum atoms and an open circle to represent chlorine. So if I want to draw this reaction it says I need two aluminums. So I just need to have two closed circles in the first reactant box because that's two aluminum atoms. Next I have three chlorines, three Cl2s and so those are diatomic molecules. So chlorine atoms are represented by open circles and being Hofbrinkel diatomic, so that's why we have three molecules of the chlorines together. The product then are the aluminum chlorides, two aluminum chlorides, and you can see there are three chlorines attached to an aluminum, and so it should look like that. And so visually you can see whatever goes in comes out of the reaction. We've got two solid circles on both sides and six open circles on both sides. To interpret then through words, we have two atoms of aluminum reacting with three molecules of chlor uh, chlorine, making two molecules of the aluminum chloride. So that's how we do the particle level pictures and words. For the mole, um, you just replace atoms and molecules with the mole. So two moles of aluminum react with three molecules, I'm sorry, three moles of chlorine, making two moles of aluminum chloride. For the mass, remember we need to have the law of conservation of mass in check, so the mass of my reactants, two aluminums plus three molecules of chlorine, has to equal the two aluminum chlorides. So that's how you check on the mass level. And then the last question I ask you about the ratio, mole ratio, and so I believe it asks chlorine to aluminum chloride. And so that ratio is three to two, or three over two. Alright, so that should help, and you've got the back side of that that you can be practicing as well. Alright, thanks.